guys, Mary from SVG Cuts here with some brand new projects for Valentine's Day and beyond. Because I think some of these could be adapted to other other occasions, you know, like birthdays, maybe um, wedding. You can make a little wedding favor or, you know, for a wedding shower or something. <clears throat> for example, if you made this all in white, if you made this card all in white or um, this one, you know, white and ivory or something like that. So, I had a lot of fun coming up with these projects and we've got, as usual, I've got five different, five different projects. So this one was a lot of fun to come up with. Super cute little, little decor. You could just hang it up somewhere around the house as some really fun, fun decoration. If you enjoy decorating for various holidays, that'll be adorable. <clears throat> you could even um, make it and affix it to the front of a bag or box or shadow box or something so I can't wait to see how uh, how you come up with yours how it looks even different from mine so we also have this really cool little heart box and like I was saying you can make it in all different colors it's nice obviously it's nice for Valentine's Day and it's finished off nicely on the inside too so it's kind of a different shape from the heart boxes that we have in the store already which are more just like flat heart shapes. So I like how this one is more rounded and dimensional and it's a lot of fun to put together. So we also have this really cute little little bonbon which um, you could make as like a <clears throat> like a mint a mint candy out of like light green or um, chocolate obviously. You could put some sprinkles on it instead of the icing. Either way it's really really cute and I'm really happy with how that came out also. So of course we have some cool cards to go with it and um, I think this could totally be adapted to all kinds of stuff. If you made it in different colors, it would be really nice for a wedding, a wedding card, wedding shower card or engagement card or just any kind of um, card or project for someone that you love. So the paper that I used this time is from Echo Park, it's called Blowing Kisses. I think it's really pretty and um, I love the the chalkboard it's nice and on trend as they say I think it's really pretty it comes with some stickers and there's a, a small 6x6 six six pad also so I had a lot of fun working with that paper I love the colors but like I always say whatever kind of paper you have in mind is gonna look really cool so also another side note is this is like a momentous occasion this has been my favorite glue for as long as I've been doing paper crafts for I don't know at least like a decade or so and um, I just like it because it's easy to find they always have it at the craft store and it works really well um, precision tip dries nicely I know there's some other glues out there that some of you guys love um, I just I like this so I, I don't really want to you know if it ain't broke don't fix it as they say so I haven't really branched out to try other glues but I went to buy some more at Hobby Lobby and they changed, it's the same glue, but they changed the, uh, the name kind of and they changed the packaging a little bit. So I guess this is our new, uh, this is Mary's new favorite glue. It looks a little different, kind of earth shattering because I've been with this, this red bottle for so long. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these three dimensional projects go together. So let's get started. So first of all, for our heart-shaped box, I've got the pieces laid out here. And first, I'm just gonna put together the lid, which is a nice, a nice rounded shape. And the, the pieces are uh, pretty simple. So first, I've got two pieces that look like this. That's gonna be the bottom rim. And then there are two pieces like this, which is the next rim and then finally these two pieces make up this top smaller rim which then gets glued to the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is put together my bottom part. So I'm going to take these two pieces and one of these two has a small circle cut out of it and that just signifies that that's the bottom of the heart so that's going to end up down here so I'm going to put some glue on this tab here and glue the other one 
right to it. Then I'm going to close it up by putting some glue on the other tab here. And as, as always, I have my super helpful helper. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. So I'm going to close this up here like this <laughs> and set that aside. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two pieces. So I'm going to put some glue on this tab here and glue that right into place. So I'll give it a second to dry. <laughs> really? Sweeney. And then, okay, oh now you're blocking the light a little bit. <laughs> and then I'm going to put some glue on this tab and close this up. Like this. She's just so helpful with everything I do. It's so nice to have a nice helper. Oh, we're going to lay down right now? Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing with these two smaller, skinnier pieces. And glue that right into place. I'm going to hold that while it dries a little bit. And then glue this one closed also. So I just did the same thing to all three pieces, nice and straightforward. And there we go, nice and dry. So <coughs> The first thing I would like to do is, you can see that this is the heart shape here. This is the bottom down here. And then, as I said, this one has a tiny little circle down here that's hidden, but that's the bottom too. So we want to put the two bottoms together. And I'm going to anchor it in place with some glue on that tab there. And you want to really be careful to line it up really nicely with the edge, the two edges lined up and those two bottom points lined up really nicely. Because the, the more careful you are with lining it up really perfectly, the better everything's going to go together. So next I'm going to jump up on the same side to the top. And actually, I'm going to bend this the opposite way, as well as this one. And I'm going to do the same thing up at the top and anchor that into place really carefully. And I'm going to hold it for a, a few extra seconds as it dries. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and anchor the other side of the top into place. And again, I'm going to hold that for a little, a little while longer while it dries so that it doesn't slip out of place. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the other bottom tab there and anchor that guy just right. So now all that's left to do for this step 
is to just carefully, maybe two at a time, glue down each tab so that everything is lined up nicely. So as you can see, I put some glue on these two tabs here and I'm going to carefully line it up. And as you can see, they just meet together just right. But instead of working my way all the way around in a, in a straight line, I'm going to jump up to the, okay, okay, that's nice. I love you too. I'm going to jump up to the other two tabs on the side of this. And, okay. I love you, but go over there. And then put these two tabs into place. So I've got it glued together here and here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish gluing the, other, the rest of these tabs on this side into place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So next I'm going to glue the next piece into place, which goes together in the same way, because I've got these two together. So to do that, I want to bend this, this one up at the top into a heart shape. And then <clears throat> once again, I can, oops, once again, I can anchor it into place by putting some glue on these first top two tabs and once again I want to carefully line it up so that the bottom corners are meeting really nicely and the, the edges are meeting each other really nicely and again I'm going to hold it in place for a few extra seconds so that the glue is definitely taking hold before I start bending it too much. So then next, I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on this top tab on the side to anchor that into place also. And again, I will very carefully line it up, make sure that the, the corners are lining up nicely and the edges are lining up nicely. And again, I'm gonna hold that for a few extra seconds as it dries. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing up here and down here like I just did before, but from the inside, I'm gonna put my glue in. From, okay, well then just go. Just go. You're out of here. Okay. So now I can <laughs> put some glue on the two bottom tabs. And anchor those into place on the other side. <laughs> that was fun while it lasted, but it got kind of ugly there. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing at the top, and then just like I did before, I'm going to go around from the inside, kind of alternating my way back and forth with those inner tabs until they meet in the middle. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So here are my three parts put together, three layers, and the next thing I'm going to do is take this heart here, which has a little tiny heart cut out of it, and I'm going to glue that inside inside my lid. So to do that, I would like to anchor that into place as well. So I've got some glue here on this this tab here, and I really want to, to butt that up against the inside here, make sure that, that, that it's going all the way down to the, as far as it can in the corner there. So I'm going to 
put that into place and really hold it for a few extra seconds as that glue takes hold. So I went ahead and did the same thing on the other side of the top here. I've got it nicely anchored into place. And I'm going to go ahead and flip up a couple more tabs and put glue on them. Fold those over. And looking down from the top, I can see that it's going in the, the right spot here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Flip those back over. Do the same thing on the other side and get that in the right place and just push down from the inside. So now I've really got the top anchored into place nicely here. I'm going to go ahead and flip over a few tabs on the bottom, just on one side. I've got the first four tabs flipped up on the bottom. On either side, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And then I want to go ahead and fold those into place. So once those, a couple on the bottom start to take hold, I'm just turning it over and pushing down from the inside. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So now all that's left to do is just glue the rest of those tabs down, <coughs> which is nice and easy because everything is being held into place by the top and the bottom anchors that we glued into place. So I'm going to just do one side at a time and at this point if you've got some scrap, scrap paper or if you don't really care about your work surface too much, you can... Um, not worry about the scrap paper, but either way, as you can see, I put a line of glue there. I folded those back over and then just push down from the inside. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So now all that's left to do is finish putting our top together. So there's one more red heart, if yours is red, that does not have a, a little heart cut out of it, and that's the top, the top of the top. And as you can see, I went ahead and glued my bottom panel and my decorative piece and my top panel and my other decorative piece. So I'm just going to carefully cover this with some glue, getting pretty close to the edge with just the right amount of glue. And of course, I want to line it up really nicely. And once I'm happy with the placement of it, I can go ahead and turn it over and push down from the inside, especially along the edge of the heart to make sure that that glue is taking hold nicely. So next I could either just glue this into place or I could use some dimensional pop dots. I used some Zots by ThermoWeb underneath this to kind of pop it out, give it some more dimension. And then I took a hot glue gun with some red sequin trim that I got at the craft store, actually over in the sewing area <coughs> of Michael's, kind of um, like the sewing 
trim area by the lace and everything. So finally, I guess you could say this part is optional. We have these interior pieces, and if you would like, you can put some glue on the back side of them and just carefully bend those into place inside to cover up those, um, those tabs. So if you really want your box to have a finished look inside too, you can do that. And it's, it's really easy and straightforward. You can see exactly where they go. You just glue those into place. So finally for the bottom of our box, very simple and straightforward. Two side pieces here with some glue on one side tab. I'm going to glue one to the other. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And this also has a tiny little circle cut out of it to signify that it's the bottom. You know, the bottom of the heart, like the point, the pointy end of the heart. And I'll glue that into place. And then I'm going to take a look and, okay, so this is the bottom down here. And I'm going to take my, I've got these two hearts. I want to take the one with the little heart cut out of it and that's going to get glued inside like so. So to do that, as usual, I'm going to anchor this into place with some glue on one of those tabs up at the top. And I really want the, I really want that pointy part to be butted up right inside the top of the heart there. And once it's really taking hold, I can put some glue on the bottom, bottom tab. And I really want to make sure that the bottom point of the heart is really butted up against the inside of that point down there also. And then all that's left to do is just glue the rest of these down. So go ahead and glue those into place. Maybe um, Let's get some more anchor anchors in place at the top and the bottom. And then everything else just kind of falls into place nice and easy. So I've got the bottom two and the top two glued into place. Now all that's left to do is glue the side. And I'm going to go ahead and if you have some scrap paper, now is a good time to get it out and do this on top of some scrap paper. But as you can see, I just put a line of glue around one side, bend those tabs back over, and then it just fits perfectly right into place. So I can push down from the inside and make sure that glue is taking hold. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And then cover the whole thing with glue, getting pretty close to the edge. And then glue the bottom right into place. Next for our bonbon, we have it here and it's kind of in three parts. We've got the bottom wrapper and then the bottom of the box is glued right inside there. And then there's the lid. So first I'm gonna make the lid here. And that is made up of these parts here. So it kind of goes in order from this top square. Next, there are these two pieces. And then we've got this forms one piece and this forms another piece. So I'm going to start from the bottom. And if you look very carefully, you can see some tiny little guidelines that your machine has cut into this piece, and they kind of look like little tiny score lines, but they are just there to help you line it up perfectly, line up one with the other just right. So the more, the more perfectly that it's lined up, the better it's going to 
go together in the, uh, you know, it's just the better it's going to go together. So that is why I put those little lines there. And it's kind of, it's kind of hard to see. If you kind of curve your paper, they kind of are more exposed. But you don't want to fold it there. They're just there to help you glue it into place. So I'm just gluing the end closed. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the next two pieces here. And again, there are some little score lines, just like the last one. And I want to glue these together and then close it up on the other side the same way. So again, I'm just using those tiny little lines and lining up the edge of the one piece with those two little lines. And the, the nicer it's lined up, the better. So now, this one is just one piece. Since the sides get smaller as you go from the bottom to the top, this one didn't have to be broken into two pieces, it's just one. And they all have little guidelines. I accidentally folded that. You don't really want to fold it. You just want to use it as a guideline, but it's not the end of the world that I did fold it. So there are the four pieces that we're going to glue together and then the top. So I'm going to start from the bottom to the top and all four sides of our, our project here are the same. So it doesn't matter which one goes where. Although since there's a seam here and a seam here, I might as well line up this seam with the other seam. And I'm just gluing that right into place. And then I'm going to jump across to the opposite side, put some glue on that tab, and carefully line it up and glue that into place. Then there are two more long tabs. I'm going to put my glue on from the inside and glue that into place. Then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. And get that guy in the right spot there. And then each of the four corners has three little tabs. So you want to go ahead and put a dot of glue on each of those from the inside. And just fold those right up. They just fall right into place nice and easy. So go ahead and do that to the other three corners. So I've got the bottom two pieces glued together and I'm going to do the same exact thing with this next piece. So again, I will just put some glue on one of these long tabs. And again, all four sides are the same. So it doesn't matter which way it goes. But since there's a seam here, I might as well put that up against the other part that has a seam. And I'm doing the same, same thing over again here. I'm just going to jump across to the opposite side, put some glue on that long tab, put this guy right into place. And the better you line it up, the nicer it's all going to fall right into place. And then again, I will go from the inside, put some glue on this long tab, 
Then I'll jump across to the opposite side, do the same thing to the other long tab, and then from the inside, I will put some glue on the three tabs in each corner and fold those right up. Now I can go ahead and glue this piece here. So I'll put some glue on this tab. Since the seam is here and the seam is here, I'll go ahead and put that into place. And then again, same thing, just jump across to the other side, glue this tab down, then glue the other long tabs from the inside, and then glue those four corners into place from the inside. So now all that's left to do is put some glue on these four tabs on top, going all the way out to those little corners, and getting pretty close to the edge. and glue this square right into place. So I'm going to really line it up carefully on just one tab first, and then on the opposite tab carefully, and then on the other two. And once I'm happy with where it's placed, I can flip it over on top of my table and push down from the inside. So just one additional thing to note is that before I put my icing on, I actually took a, a block of sandpaper. I have this, uh, I got this at Michael's some time ago. It's a Tim Holtz um, sand block. And I just went ahead and kind of lightly sanded the edges a little bit. So. In my case, it kind of made the edges a little bit whiter, like a lighter color, which I don't know if that's the look you want to go for or not, but you don't need to do that if you would like to. I did. I feel like it kind of made it look a little more rounded, but it's up to you. Then all that's left to do is take our two little squiggles of icing and glue them to the top. So instead of gluing these to each other right now, I think it's best if you glue down one first, and I think it's, it's a good idea if you put glue just on the, the ends where it, where it bends a couple at a time, and just hold it down for a minute as it takes hold, because then <clears throat> if, the, uh, if the other parts of it kind of lift up off of the, the top, then it kind of gives it more of a, of a rounded look. So then you can go ahead and do that to the other ends, glue that down, and then you can glue this in the same way onto the top of that so that it looks like this. So next I'm going to Fold one of these bottom tabs over and put some glue on it. And then I would like to glue any four, the four sides are all the same. And if you look carefully, you can kind of see a little point here and a little point here. It doesn't have to um, be crazy perfect because it'll still fit together even if it's a little bit off and no one's going to see it down there. But I would still like to anchor this into place nicely. So now that that anchor is in place, if you have some scrap paper handy, if you'd like to protect your work surface, you can go ahead and get that out. But I'm going to put a line of glue around the rest of the bottom there. I'm going to tuck that inside while I <clears throat> bend these tabs back down. I'm going to set that down and then carefully put this into place. Everything's nice and flat down there and I'm just pushing down from the inside. 
So next we can make the wrapper part of our bonbon. <clears throat> and as you can see, all these bottom tabs you get, get folded over and then these are alternating. So they're the same. And this first one, what I did was I bent them all this way, uh, every single one of them. And then I went back and I bent every other one the opposite way. Because it's easier to do that <coughs> if they're already, already creased. And as you can see, I'm actually, I'm actually not bending the whole entire thing all the way down. I'm only bending just the top part <coughs> about as much as, you know, my fingertips, leaving that much. It does kind of fold, but it's not a sharp, a sharp fold. So once you've got both pieces like that, you can go ahead and put some glue on the end tab and glue one to the other. We want that to take hold nicely. Make sure it's really, really taking hold. Sometimes I, when I'm doing these videos, I have a tendency to rush a little bit in the glue. The glue doesn't take hold all the way. And if it starts to come apart while you're working with it, it's a little, well, it's not what you want. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Give it a moment to dry. And then we want to take our bottom piece with a little heart cut out of it and we're going to glue that inside. Well, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to take, there's a, a seam here, right here. So I'm going to put some glue on those two tabs and I'm going to glue my corner right inside. Then I'm going to jump across to the opposite corner and do the same thing. Get some glue on those two. And just get those right into place so that they are flush with each other. So that's anchored into place nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing. Oops, that's where I already, or no, I, no. I'm on the, the opposite corner, which does not have glue on it yet. Hold those over. And anchor that guy into place. And then the final fourth corner, do the same thing. So now it's really holding its shape and all that's left to do is one side at a time, put a nice dot of glue on each of these tabs, fold them over flip it over and kind of hold it in, hold it together as you push down from the inside. So as you can see, it's a nice, nice line there. So go ahead and do that to the other three sides. Then you can cover the bottom with glue and put your bottom into place. And the four sides of this are all the same. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Then you've got the bottom of your box. Finally, for our Cupid's bow, I have the pieces laid out here. And first, we will put together the, the main part of it, and then the arrow goes together last. So it's pretty straightforward. We've got these two pieces here, and 
They both have a little square cut out of them, and so does this piece. So these go together, and then these two pieces have a little triangle cut out of them, and so does this, so they go together. So let's go ahead and put this one <coughs> together. So I'm going to take a look closely. You can see some little guidelines that your machine has cut a little line here and a little line here. That is there as, as a guideline to help you line up the one piece with the other. Whoops. Crazy glue. So I'm going to put some glue on this tab underneath those guidelines and glue one to the other. And the more carefully and perfectly you can line this up, the better. So I will go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And glue that in place nice and perfectly. So I might hold it for a few extra moments as it dries here so it doesn't come apart. And then might as well do the same exact thing with this piece and glue this together and then also on the other side. So I've got the one with the flat side here, which goes with the, the square, the one with the little square. And what I'm gonna do first is this little pointy triangular tab, I'm gonna glue it to this as an anchor. So I'm gonna actually bend it backwards so that I can get glue on it all the way out to the corner and then carefully glue that into place with the corner lined up with the point of the shape and really give it some time to dry. Do a little check inside. Yes, it's nice and nice and straight. And then I will do the same thing on the other end. So I really want that little point right in the corner there. And it's just a nice straight line. I want it to be lined up really nicely. And it's okay that it's shaped like this. Just like that. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to do the same thing on the other part. And it doesn't matter which side you go with, just pick a side and do the same thing with this piece. So next I'm going to glue the other side of the corner in place with some glue on those pieces and I just really want those to be totally flush with each other and again give it some extra time to dry. Now I've got the three tabs in the corner glued down on each side and I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on three more of the tabs and bend those into place. And then on the other side, I'll do the same thing. So basically what we're going to do is work your way a little bit at a time, alternating sides and alternating ends. So a few over here, a few over here, a few over here, a few over here, and keep jumping back until you meet in the middle. 
So I'll go ahead and do a couple more. I'll just do what I did on this side. And as you get closer to meeting <coughs> in the middle, it, um, it starts to hold its shape more and goes a little bit quicker. But you do want to be careful to just keep lining it up nicely. And that's your best bet for making sure that it's going to be just perfect. And then back over to the other side on the other end. So you get the idea. I'm just alternating sides and ends gluing down one or two or three tabs <clears throat> at a time. So I've worked my way towards the middle and all that's left are some of these really smaller ones in the center. So now I can go ahead and just put a line of glue on both sides and fold those over. And you should probably do this on top of some scrap paper if you want to protect your work surface. But you can go ahead and just push down carefully from the inside along the edge there to just do all the rest of those tabs in one felled swoop. So now all we're going to do is the same exact thing with this piece. The only difference is it's also got some tabs on the opposite side, but for now we're just going to ignore those that other side and just go ahead and do the same thing that we just did to this piece. So I've worked my way to the middle of this one. I'm about to glue those down, but first you want to go on the opposite side and bend all of those out of the way so that you can reach inside nicely. So I will go ahead and put a line of glue where the tabs are going to go and kind of quickly flip those forward and lay this down on top of some scrap paper or or what have you and push down from the inside. So the next thing I want to do is take this piece and my two brads, they're about a quarter inch, quarter inch brads, but it doesn't doesn't really matter if you have smaller ones or bigger ones, that's fine. And I opened it up on the inside, but there's a tiny little gap inside there as well. Might be a little tough to see inside there, but all I'm saying is that I'm not flattening it out super tight to the paper. So it'll stay in place, but it has a little wiggle room. So then we can take this other piece and carefully slide it right into place. So that's why I left some wiggle room so that these slots here can slide on either side of the brads. So you have to kind of wiggle it around to get, get around that brad, slide that right into place. And then we're going to just carefully glue these tabs down on the either, either end and then just work your way from both sides towards the middle and glue all these tabs over so that it's all glued over into place. So here's the body of my Cupid's bow and it doesn't really matter, it doesn't matter which way you turn it because the center is here, it could be like this or it could be like that. So same goes for these two pieces, they're the same either way and what we want to do is go ahead and glue them either one to either side with a nice little line of glue going all the way out to the corners pretty close to the edge and some in the middle also and you just want to line it up nice and centered
like so. So go ahead and glue the other one to the other side. Next we can go ahead and make our little arrow. And as you can see, I've got the arrowhead here. I went ahead and glued the little hearts onto it. And then I can close it up by putting some glue on the middle tab and that one on the right. And bend that over like this. And then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and my piece of my wooden dowel. It's a quarter inch dowel. I cut it to about six and a third, six and a quarter, somewhere in there. And I'm going to take my hot glue gun and get some glue right down in the point. And it's okay if it's a little a little messy in there. This is my less pretty end, so I'm going to use that to put inside. And so I just want it to be nice and centered and straight right down into the point down there. So next, we can go ahead and put it through the holes. And then I'm going to take my little piece here. And as you can see in my example, it's sticking out about, about that far. So I want to wrap this piece of paper right about here. So I'm going to keep, that's, let's see, how far is that exactly? That's about, it's a little over a quarter of an inch or so. So then I'm going to put some glue on this little strip, just a nice little line of glue. And I want to carefully wrap it around the wood. Next I'm going to take my piece of twine and it's about 20 inches long which gives a little extra room to tie it in a double knot around both brads. So I'm just carefully tying it in a nice little double knot and then, you know what, actually first, before I finish that, I would like to go ahead and put this on. That's going to be easier. So as you can see in my example here, it's again a little over a quarter of an inch. Let's see. It doesn't have to be exact. Oh, you know what, that's, uh, that's more like a half an inch. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is wrap this around. And I'm going to kind of get it curving in the right direction. There's no glue in there just yet. But I would like it to be curved a little bit. So I'm going to cover the back side of this with some glue. And then I will wrap it around about a half an inch away from the end. Nice and straight and nice and straight and glued to the dowel. And then we can go ahead and decide which side of the arrow you want to be facing forward. So at this point, I also have my little back parts of my arrow. So there's three on one side, three on the other side. And so there are two pieces that look like this with a little panel that goes here. So there's 
one, two, three, four, five, six, going from smaller to larger. So I went ahead and glued those together. And since you've got your hot glue gun, that would be, you could use a hot glue gun, or actually I just used regular glue. So you wanna go ahead and glue those onto the side, going from smaller to larger on both sides. And then once those are in place, you can go ahead and finish up your twine. So if you make it tight, kind of taut, not too tight, but sort of, it will just stay in place if you'd like. Or if you want to take a little craft saw and just saw a tiny little notch in the end for it to hold it even more securely, you can do that. But I actually did not do that and it worked out. So just go ahead and tie the other end of the twine and then trim off the extra twine and you are all set. So there you have it, really fun projects for Valentine's Day and beyond. I hope you have a blast making them and if you do, you'll have to share a picture with us on our Facebook wall or on Instagram or put it on your blog and we'll pin it on Pinterest or um, what else? You could tweet it, we could uh, check it out there, however you like to share. I always love seeing your projects and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Good job, Winnie.